Hey all, one thing I've talked about quite a few times on this channel is that we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic right now. With new vaccines proving successful in trials, perhaps signaling that the pandemic is coming to an end soon, I thought this would be a good time to talk about the coronavirus pandemic in China and how it's been going and how that's been different from the way things have been going back home. So let's start out by pointing out the obvious that China is actually where the coronavirus pandemic began, specifically in the city of Wuhan, which is about 700 kilometers west of Shanghai. Its exact origin is still uncertain, but the most common theory is that it came from a wet market called the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan. There's been a lot of stigma around wet markets because of this, but the truth is that most Chinese wet markets are totally safe places that sell meat and vegetables. This wet market was different though. It was known for its unsanitary conditions and for selling wild animals for food. Most wet markets just sell ordinary meats like beef, pork, and chicken, as well as seafood. This unusual wet market is theorized to have been the source of the coronavirus, which may have leapt from a wild animal species to humans there. At first, news of the epidemic was largely a murmur. Rumors of a particularly severe flu in Wuhan and a few other Chinese cities. I remember my wife starting to talk about it a week or so before Chinese New Year of 2020. I also remember being in Hong Kong just a few days before that holiday at West Kowloon Station, which is where high-speed trains to mainland China leave and arrive. There were announcements warning people to be careful of travel to Wuhan. In a matter of a few days, though, the situation had become much more severe. Right as we traveled to her hometown to celebrate the new year, restrictions started popping up. We couldn't visit most of her relatives there. The villages were being isolated. People were starting to wear face masks outside. Actually, that was fairly common in China even before the pandemic, that people who felt sick might wear a face mask. But now more and more people were wearing them regardless of their health. By the time we went back from my wife's hometown to Guangzhou, a two-hour bus ride, it was mandatory to wear a mask. And it wasn't easy to do so because masks were in short supply due to the spike in demand. We got back to Guangzhou to find the metro trains running at 10 minute intervals, unheard of for them to run so infrequently on a major line, and yet they were nearly empty. People were staying inside. Non-essential shops were closed, and those that were open required you to wear a mask and go through a temperature screening first. After initially allowing the epidemic to spiral, China was taking heavy measures to suppress it. And these restrictions that I experienced were in a relatively unaffected province. While we were encouraged to stay inside as much as possible, there were no true lockdown orders restricting us to our homes in Guangdong province. In Wuhan and Hubei province, of which Wuhan is capital, draconian lockdown measures were enforced, with people unable to leave the province. In many cities, people were required to remain in their houses, except one person every two days being allowed outside to buy groceries. As they had failed to rein in the pandemic early on, the highest officials of both Hubei province and the city of Wuhan were fired by China's central government. Schools had already closed in China for the New Year holiday. They didn't reopen in February like they normally would have. Most businesses remain closed also, except for essentials. I remember contacting a print shop near me to get some printing done. They had to arrange a time for me to come in alone because they weren't allowed to have normal business hours. These measures were harsh, but they worked. 
Not long after they began to implement them, the exponential increase in cases began to slow, to plateau, and ultimately to reverse. And as cases went down, more and more businesses were allowed to reopen, though they continued to require face masks and temperature checks. In Guangdong, schools conducted online learning for about three months before finally reopening for in-person instruction in mid-May. Most other provinces followed similar timelines, except for those most affected by the epidemic. China is now largely reopened, with transportation and business largely being back to normal, just with more precautions like temperature checks and masks in crowded places. International travel is one exception, as it's still heavily restricted. COVID-19 cases are very low now in China much lower than in the United States, the United Kingdom, and many other Western countries. There are still some cases here, and they're taken very seriously. One case was found in Zhuqiao, a part of Shanghai that's nearly an hour's drive from me, and yet I still got emails at work asking if I had been there or if I had been in contact with anyone from there. That's how seriously contract tracing is taken here in China. Shanghai Disneyland was the first Disney park to reopen, and unlike those in Hong Kong and Paris, it has never reclosed. I expect Chinese New Year this year will be much more back to normal for many people. So, there's a lot for me to be glad about right now, since the pandemic is being well controlled where I am. I hope this little talk about experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic in China was informative to you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it. And if you want to hear more about my life in China, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching today. Bye.